Welcome back everyone to our next video in the Thinkorswim tutorial series where today we're going to be learning how to create advanced scans and alerts within Thinkorswim. Now if you remember back to a couple videos ago we actually learned how to create really simple scanners and we actually learned how to create really simple pricing alerts as well. But for this next one we're going to learn how to create alerts and scans based off things a little more complicated like study crossovers or buy or sell signals. Things that many of you more active traders or people who use technical analysis might actually find much more valuable. So just as an example, if we came up here to our charts for a second, let's say we were looking for stocks that had a recent MACD crossover. So for those of you unfamiliar with what the MACD is, if we go ahead and add it to this chart just for a second here, go ahead and search for it, click on it in the list, add it to our side panel over here, we can see it will appear as a lower study, and now that we're done, we'll hit OK. So looking down here at the bottom of our chart, we will find the MACD along with the MACD histogram. And let's just say for this one, we are looking for a bullish MACD crossover. So we're looking for times when the MACD line, this blue line right here, recently has crossed above the gold line or the signal line. So to do that, we are going to come back up to our scanner just like in the previous video. Looking down below, we can still see all those filters we made in the previous one here. We've got the last price somewhere between 10 and 500. We're looking for companies above $2 billion, have a dividend yield between one and 8%. This one is blank, so we'll just get rid of it for now. And then the final one, we're looking for stocks that trade on average more than 2 million shares a day. But now in order for us to add that MACD crossover filter, we're going to come up here to add a filter in the upper right hand corner, then come down below to study. Looking over on our left hand side, we can see the default filter that got added, ADX crossover. Opening that up, we can see a list of some of the pre-made study filters down here below. And actually, I believe if we were to look in the popular study section, over here on the right, we can see we already have one pre-made for MACD. But a lot of times this won't be here depending on what it is you're scanning for or if you want to create something a little more advanced than what's just pre-made right here. So what we're going to learn how to do is create a custom scan. To do that, we'll come over here on the left and then at the bottom, we're going to open up custom down here. That will then open up this scanner custom filter box, which if I look at the very top, you can see it's already pre-filled with that ADX crossover, which we don't want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and begin by deleting whatever is in here. And now that this is blank, I'm going to go ahead and add my very first condition. So to do that, we'll come down below to add a condition. It'll then ask us what the very first condition is. And remember, what we're looking for in this example is the MACD line to have recently crossed above the signal line on the MACD. So because we are looking for the MACD line, we're going to be selecting a condition. The MACD is a study, so we're going to come down here below and select study. We can then see a nice long list of all the different studies we could use, but I'm just going to come up here and search for MACD, and I'll just need to scroll up a little bit to see it. We can then go ahead and click on it. And now you can see the pre-filled inputs over here on the left. And honestly, we're not going to change any of these because right now it is plotting the value line, which is the MACD line itself. It's using the same inputs that we want to use. So it's using the 12 and 26 period EMA and then a nine period slowing to get the average of those. So I am going to leave those set as the default, but later on you guys could adjust these if you ever needed to. And then what I want to say is I'm looking for the MACD value line or the MACD line itself to have recently crossed above. So we're going to select crosses above here. And then I just need to specify what it's crossed above. So we'll again go ahead and select a condition. We're going to use the study condition again, because remember, I'm looking for it to have crossed above the signal line, that yellow line on the MACD. So it is a study. We'll go ahead and search for MACD again. And for this one, we do need to change one of these inputs, because right now it's saying I'm looking for the MACD value line to have crossed above the MACD value line, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So what we're going to do is go ahead and click on the value line here. And I'm instead going to change it to the average line, which is actually that signal line, the yellow line we saw a second ago. And the final thing I could do on this right hand side is if I scroll down to the very bottom, right here in this bottom input, 
is where I could specify how recently that crossover had to have occurred. Right now, with one bar selected, I'm basically saying that MACD crossover had to have just happened within one bar. So it had to have just happened. If I change this to five bars, I'm now saying it could have happened within the last five candles. And because I'm using a daily chart, and I'll show you how to change that here in a minute, that's basically saying the crossover had to happen within the last five days. For our purposes, we're actually going to leave it set to one, because I am looking for stocks that just had that crossover happen. But later down the line, if you start mixing together multiple different indicators, this might be something you want to adjust. Because you might say, hey, show me stocks that were oversold on the RSI within the last five days, but then just had a MACD crossover. So for RSI, we said that it could have happened in the last five days, but MACD had to have just happened. So we're kind of mixing the two together. But I know that's a little complicated. I'll try to explain it a little better here in just a minute. But for right now, to save this, we'll just come down below and hit save. And now we can see our single condition right up here. So again, we're looking for the value line to have just recently crossed above the MACD line or the average line. And if you look in the upper left-hand corner where it says aggregation D for day, that's why we're using daily candles. If you're a day trader or a scalper or you just wanted to change this time frame that we're looking at, you could just click on this and then adjust the candlestick right here. So adjust the time frame that you're looking for that crossover to have occurred. In my case, I'm happy with leaving it as day. So we'll just come down here and select day again. And now that I'm done, we're just gonna come down below and hit okay to save that. To see which companies meet our criteria now, let's go ahead and come up here and hit scan again. And here you can see our list is far smaller. We've only got seven companies that meet all of our criteria. So over here, we've got ACI, we've got BTU, COP. And remember, all of these companies meet all of the criteria that we've set up here. So coming down below, if we were to pull up Marathon Oil, let's go back to our chart and throw that symbol in, MRO. Looking down below on the MACD, you can see that crossover did just happen. So the crossover literally did just happen within one bar, and it meets all of the other criteria that we set. If we wanted to check on another one, let's say we wanted to pull up BTU. We'll again throw in BTU up here. Looking back down below at the MACD, we can again see that crossover just happened. So all of these companies meet our MACD crossover criteria. And if we wanted to save this, we'll again come up to the upper right-hand corner, hit Save Scan Query, give it a name we can remember, which in my case, I'm using all the same filters as before, so I'm going to keep it roughly the same, but I'm going to throw in MACD in here. And once I save that, remember, we can now access that scanner anytime we want as a watch list over here on our side panel. So if I now wanted this watch list right here to reflect those MACD crossovers, I could go ahead and click on it, go to my personal list, which is where all of my watch lists and scanners are stored, and then look over here on the right and select that large cap dividend MACD scanner. Then looking over here on my list, remember this is going to be constantly updating. So if Apple today has a MACD crossover, it would appear on this list. If later down the line, MRO tomorrow no longer meets the criteria, it would disappear from this list. So I really think you're going to find these incredibly useful for how you trade or how you find things to trade, but it can be a little tricky to get the hang of it. If we were to add another filter, and remember before I was using RSI as my example, but let's say we're also looking for stocks that are in an uptrend. So the stock price is currently trading above, let's just say it's 50 day moving average, while also recently having a MACD crossover. So to add that new one, we'll again come up here to add a filter. It's again going to be a study filter. We'll come over here to the default study parameter that gets added. And again, it's always the ADX crossover. But opening that up, we'll again come down below and open up custom. Within this window, remember the first thing we want to do is just delete the pre-made template that's in here. And now we can come down below and add our condition. For this one, we're going to keep it pretty simple. All we're looking for is the price of the stock to be currently above the 50-day moving average. That means the first parameter we're going to be looking for is the price of the stock. So we'll come up here to select a condition. Because we're looking for the price, we're going to select the price condition. We want to use the closing value, which is basically just the current value of the stock right now. So we're going to say when the close is greater than because remember, we're looking for the price of the stock to be above or greater than the 50-day moving average. 
So now that we've got that selected, we can now come over here and select the 50 day moving average by coming down below and using the study condition. We're then going to search for the simple moving average. And here in the list, we can see second one from the top. And the only thing I need to change right here is change the length from the nine period average to the 50 period average. With that set, we'll come down below and hit save. I'm happy with the aggregation period being a day because I do want to look at the 50 day moving average. So we'll go ahead and leave that set. And now that I'm happy with it, we'll come down below and hit OK. And once again, hit scan to see all the companies that meet those criteria. In this case, we can see we've refined the list even further because now instead of seeing seven, we've only got three companies that meet those criteria. And just to double check this, making sure it works correctly, if we wanted to pull up Gilead, we'll come back up here to the charts, throw in the symbol here, and it looks like looking down below, the first criteria was met. I know it's basically overlapping, but it looks like that MACD line has recently crossed above the signal line. And then in the case of the simple moving average, let's go ahead and add that to our chart as well, just to make sure it is working correctly. So here you can see I've added the moving average and I just need to edit that to be the 50 day moving average. And now with that set, we can obviously see the current price is well above its 50 day moving average. So it looks like our scan is working exactly as intended. We're seeing only those companies that are trading above their 50 day moving average, have had a MACD crossover, have a dividend greater than 1%, and all the other things that we set previously. But that's how we can add study criteria to our filters. When we then want to turn this into an alert, so let's say I want to be alerted whenever a new company meets this criteria, what I could do is come over here to my watch list on the left-hand side, and for this example, I am going to use just the large cap dividend MACD. So I'm not going to include that 50 day moving average that we added a second ago. I'm just going to use this one. And what I want to do is open back up that menu. And if we look in the list here, there's going to be a button that says alert when scan results change. So if we click on this and we create an alert based off of our scan that we created, what we're saying is alert me anytime a new symbol is added to this scanner or to this watch list. The only thing I would warn you about is only do this if you have a really refined list, which it looks like this is. There's only three companies that met the criteria because otherwise, if you have a really simple scan that maybe has hundreds or even thousands of results on it per day, you are going to be getting so many notifications. It's going to be incredibly annoying. And then at that point, it's not even useful anymore. So please only do this when you've created a really refined watch list or scanner. And then once we do this, once we hit create, if later down the line we ever needed to cancel it or edit it, if you come back up here to the market watch tab, and here I've got the alerts section selected, down here below we can see all of our alerts, the bottom one being just a simple pricing condition on Google, but then the top one being our scanner alert, alerting us if any new companies are added to this large cap dividend MACD watch list. And since I don't actually want this to be working, I don't want to be alerted whenever this happens, I'm going to go ahead and right click on it and say cancel alert. But I know that can be a little bit complicated, especially with how many filters are up here, how many choices of things that you could select or add to your scanners. Honestly, I really just recommend you sit down and play with it a little bit, try and get a feel for how this works. And with time, I promise you it will come to you. But hopefully that's enough to get you started and definitely stick around for our final video in the series where we're going to cover some of the advanced features and customizations that we just haven't had time to cover quite yet. Go ahead and click the video below to check that out and I'll see you all there.